why is your main reason a good enough reason to support 100% confidence? twice now like there i'm obviously supposed to supposed to stop so. oh okay that kind of helped you uh decide to to stop yeah okay are you okay if we record yeah of course. cool what's your name i'm cam cam yes sir all right good to meet you cam i'm good. david nice to meet you sounds like you're pretty busy today yes sir got a had a few classes and got a lot of work going on, things like that, um, but nothing too crazy. What are you studying? Uh, right now, I'm like undecided in my major. Um, undecided? Yeah, so I'm just taking a bunch of like humanities and social science classes. Okay. What, uh, what's influencing what you take? Um, well, I mean, I was never really that good at uh, the STEM stuff. Never really found a whole lot of joy in like bio or chem or math. Uh, and I was always pretty good at, or not, I mean, I, I guess I always took, took a lot of joy in writing a good paper and uh, a lot of these humanities classes, that's what they require. Okay. So you like to write? Uh, I mean, sometimes it's tough when you gotta like buckle down and grind out an essay, but I think once you get into the flow of that, I do enjoy writing a good paper. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. So just to kind of explain what I'm doing. Yes, sir. Um, I'm interviewing folks in this community about something that's meaningful to them, something that they think is true. Yes, sir. And I'll ask questions from a neutral perspective yes, to help us kind of understand how you arrived at the conclusion. Yes, sir. And what supports your confidence that it's true. All right. Does that sound cool? So you, you want me to talk about, um, or we, we want to have a conversation about something that I hold to be true and meaningful? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what I'll have you do um, is you'll find a piece of or a pad of paper yes, sir. and a pen. Yes, sir. Um, and I'll have you write down the conclusion. Okay. And keep it hidden from me. Okay. And I'll just ask you questions about the reasoning that supports it. Yes, sir. Um, and then at the end, if you want to reveal it, you can. You don't have to. It's it's. The idea is not for me to try to guess what it is. Okay. It's just for us to be able to go through the process without me, without my bias being part of the questioning. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, just to kind of maybe help you think of something that, that you think is accurate about our shared world. Got it. A truth claim, a knowledge claim. X is true. Yeah. Um, not something that you think is not true, mm -hmm. but something that you think is true yes, sir. Like in a positive form. Yes, sir. Um, it's best if it's something that you're fairly confident in. Yes, sir. And perhaps if you found out it was not true tomorrow, your behavior would be different. If, so, if someone would walk up to me and say, like, that thing that you put down, actually, it's not worth your time because it's not even true. I would like be drastically impacted by that. If you were convinced that you found out it was false. Got it. Got it. Okay. All right.
You said your name was Cam? Yes, sir. C-A-M? Yes, sir. And the more concise, the better. Got it? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So just a couple of questions real quick. When someone when someone says something is true, yes, sir. How do you interpret that? Like what do you what's your definition of true? It is like unable to be doubted by by anyone and i know people say well like what's true to you might not be true to me then it then that wouldn't be considered a truth i would say that that's you know anything that's up for debate is not true and that's why i think what i wrote down like far and away you like i i, I wholeheartedly believe that it doesn't matter who you are where you come from you, you would you would find that to be an undoubtable truth okay yes sir if something's true it's unable to be debated? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Or, I mean, you can debate it, but I think that it would, you, you would come to the conclusion that it is like so innate to, to the real world. So like, you know, the idea, you know, if, if I say Jesus is, you know, my Lord and Savior, and I'm saying that to someone who is Buddhist, they would say, well, that's not true. But I would say, well, I hold that to be my truth. And it's like, to like what I consider to be true might be different than what you consider to be true and that that's not really a truth that's just like a personal belief uh -huh. I think a real truth is something that is so innate to everybody Buddhist Christian whatever whoever whatever you look like whoever you are then then you, you couldn't doubt it because it is so innate personal beliefs aren't not, aren't necessarily true yes yes I, w I, w I would I would say that yes, okay sir. now um, what you wrote down is that something that falls under that category of, of true that it that you can debate it but it's it's true for everyone not just a personal belief yes and I know that because I used to debate it I used to not agree with it because I thought I was better than that um, but you know I quickly have come to the conclusion in my first couple months at college that it is like as a you know just innately true and it, it can only help if you realize the truth of it. <laughs> you haven't always believed this. You no, have, no. You haven't always thought that this was true. No, no. I was, I was aware that it was, you know, it was something that other people believed was true. But I was like, eh, you know, that, that's again, like that's, that's a personal belief. I'm gonna make it work how I, how I think it should. I don't have to like fall into that same mindset. And I've come to the conclusion now that it is, without a doubt, innate to all of us. Okay, okay. Um, Scale zero to a hundred, how confident are you that it's true? Well, I, I guess if it's innate to me, I'd have to say a hundred. A hundred? Yes, sir. Okay. When you say a hundred, does that mean you cannot be wrong? I, c I could be wrong, yeah. I, and like you said, you know, if someone woke up, woke me up tomorrow morning and said what you believe in is false, I guess, you know, I'd have to take that and I would need proof, obviously, you know, sufficient evidence as to why I'd been wrong this time. But uh, I'm not I'm not going to say that I am. I have like been endowed with all knowingness. I just think that this is a, this is a belief of mine that I believe is innate to myself. And if I were to be wrong, then that would be someone taking away something that I thought was innate. And, and I would need to see that they have like the omniscience to be able to tell me that this is wrong. Okay. Somebody would have to be all knowing to tell you that it was wrong. Yeah. So, I mean, or, or I guess they'd have to have good enough proof because I, I think if you were to wake me up and tell me that this thing that I truly, you know, I mean, I just told you I have an a hundred percent belief in it. Like I would need you to give me a 100% reversal of that. belief. Okay. So the reason that somebody would give would have to give you would have to be stronger than the reason that you have for believing it. 
Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, for sure. Okay. So you're 100% confident, but you could be wrong. Yes. Um, do you have a way to tell if you're wrong? I guess... I guess death. Um, if, uh, if what I imagine death is like and your final, like your final moments, or, or I guess, you know, a lot of people spend their final moments with people, but I guess for, for my scenario, it's like when you, when you're dying, if you get five minutes alone, this would, that, that would be a way to, to prove whether I'm right or wrong. Because in the, in those couple minutes, when you're by yourself, that that would determine like the outcome of what I said. Mm. Having your five minutes, your five last minutes alone would be a way to tell if you're wrong about your conclusion. Yes, sir. I, I believe so. I, I feel like that'd be a, a very good test. Um, and, and I think that the, in the, in that scenario, if you're going to have five minutes alone, you have to you know, you have to be like on your deathbed. It's not like you, you suffer from a freak accident or something like that and just happen to die because in those moments, you know, you have no, you have no knowledge of the fact that your life is coming to an end. But it, and what I'm thinking of the best way to test whether what I put down is truly like as innate as I believe it is when you're laying on your deathbed and you've got five minutes left and you, you like, you feel yourself, your breath, your breath slowing down, whatever thoughts are running through your head, that that would I feel like that would be that would prove to me what I believe the only, the only problem is like it's it's one of those beliefs that I believe is innate enough to me and to everybody else that you could live your life by it and if you were proven wrong at death I don't think yes you'd be proven wrong but I don't think you would be disappointed in the way that you lived your life mm. if you found out you were wrong you'd still be okay with the way you lived your life. Yes. I, I don't think, I don't think it would be like, Oh my goodness, now I'm going to die. And, and what did I just do for the last 50 years? You know? Uh huh. Got it. Okay. You'd be satisfied living as though this was true. Even if you found out it was wrong. Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, are you able to, to tell me the main reason that supports your hundred percent confidence without giving away? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, now I'm starting to think that if I, if I did talk about it, I would kind of give it away. You don't have to give me the, if you think it'll give it away, you don't have to tell me. Okay. Yeah. Let's, yeah. I'm we'll, going we'll to pass. Yeah. Um, why is your main reason a good enough reason to support 100% confidence? I guess I have the privilege of not having lived this way for, you know, I would say probably seven or eight previous years. And now, you know, being here and being alone on this college campus for two months, I, I quickly came to the conclusion that the way that I had been looking at life and the way I had been living my life, it, it, was, it was selfish in a way. And I'm able to look at that and say, you know, I can't, I can't go on like that because a part of me like truly is missing. And, and I thought that, I thought that with the way I, I was living my life, I was actually like fulfilling myself, which would then allow me to enact this belief that I have. When in reality, that is more innate to me than fulfilling myself. And I have to, I have like, that has to be completed first as like almost like a human checklist. I have to get that done before I could ever come close to being like the best person I can be, I would say, the, the, like the most exemplary version of myself. 
So your main reason is a good reason because it changed your life or your perspective about life for the better? I, w I would say so. It, it completely, it showed me that my thought process was was wrong. Okay. And now that I have come to a better conclusion, like obviously it's not the easiest thing to actually act out and live your life by 24 seven, but I do think that it is without a doubt a benefit because it is so basic to our human nature. Okay. Could somebody use this reason to arrive at a false conclusion? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm sure that if someone, maybe someone lived their life with the the with my reason, and you know that they spent their high school years completely devoted to that, and then they got to college and they're like, well, I'm I'm kind of done with that. Maybe maybe the the opposite, the way that I. I spend my high school years, maybe that is the right way. So I, I guess, you know, that whole like change of thought process, it may be, if it goes the other way, people could arrive at that conclusion. I guess I would just hope that, <laughs> I, I don't know. I just, I, I'm a, looking at it in my way. Yeah. 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 So, so you're hundred percent confident in something using a reason that could be used to arrive at false conclusions. Yeah. Which sounds pretty contradictory, but. I think it's, I feel like confidence is, confidence is something that again is like, I am confident in that belief. I, I am confident in its ability to be true, but. In its ability to be true or that it is true? In, in its truth. I'm confident. I'm 100% confident in its truth, but I, I could also completely see how. Uh, that's the thing. I'm not sure if those two things are mutually exclusive because I, I do believe that I am confident in what I wrote down to that it is. In it, I'm confident in its truth, uh -huh. but I'm also confident in the ability to say that, yeah, you know, if, if someone flipped it and did it the other way, they could arrive at the wrong conclusion. Okay. So maybe another way to ask this is if a reason can be used to arrive at a false conclusion, Uh, does that mean that it's less than 100% reliable? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you're 100% confident in something using a main reason that is less than 100% reliable. Yep. I've, I feel that confidence... My, my confidence in this belief is I believe it to be true because I do think it is innate in every human and, and therefore I individually am going to put all my confidence in it. But as far as like the reliability of the, the, the proof behind it or the reliability of the reasoning behind it, that could be less than 100% for the, like the general public because the reasoning behind my belief is... that can be like given to other people. It's like, oh, maybe you use this reasoning or you try it out. You see if you come to the same conclusion, you see if this is actually true. But my confidence that that can't be like asked about another person. Yeah, no, I'm, I guess I'm curious about like the relationship between the confidence that you have that it's true and the quality of the reason that you're using. Mm. Like it doesn't seem like it matches. Yeah. I, and that's I, I, okay. I guess, I guess it's one of those things of uh, a deep thinker would say that's not okay. If you doubt it, then how can you be 100% confident? In it? Or if you doubt the process behind it, how can you be confident in its outcome? But I, I mean, I hate to say it, and this is a cop out, but it's it's my belief. I'm an 18 year old kid, and maybe on my deathbed I will be proven wrong, and and maybe my process will be shown in five minutes that I'm wrong, but I feel as though in maybe in pure naivete, I can sit here and have a hundred percent confidence in it. And that's just, that's just the conclusion that I've come to. And, and it happened recently, which is probably why that was the, like the first, like the most meaningful, meaningful thing that popped into my mind when I sat down is 
it's a it's a relatively fresh conclusion that I've come to and I'm thankful that I've come to it because I do feel that it is like I do feel that it's a universal truth and uh you know like I said if it gets if it gets proven wrong then then it gets proven wrong and if that process that I have behind it is incorrect then then it's incorrect and uh I guess for right now you know I've got maybe I don't have time but I'd like to think I do to 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 figure that all out <laughs> Mm -hmm. But but for the time being, I'm gonna I'm gonna put my confidence in it, and I, I think that you know, like I said, it, it can only be a benefit to me. How would your behavior change if, in five minutes, you found out it was not correct? I would probably, I probably revert back to my old ways a little bit, um, and I'd probably kind of crawl back into like the hole that I had of high school, it was kind of like a protective hole. Um, and I don't, I don't know if my life, like, and that's the thing, you know, maybe my life might be, appear a little bit easier if this were actually proven wrong, but I don't think it would be as rewarding if it were proven wrong. And I feel like if, if what I'm saying is true, then that needs to be like the ultimate goal of whatever's remaining in the, the, the clock of my life. And, and if that gets proven wrong, then I feel like that reward kind of gets snatched away a little bit. And, and the thing is like, when you're chasing this, it, <laughs> it's not always perfect. It's not always the most self-assuring thing. It, it doesn't always allow for, for like, you know, smiles and rainbows. But I do think that if it were taken away, whatever whatever joy I find outside of it, you know, I've come to the conclusion it, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be fulfilling in the long run. You couldn't find the same amount of joy if you decided this was false. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. Okay. Is. Is there anything that would lower your confidence in it? Like, you wouldn't necessarily have to go to zero, but is there anything that would take you from 100 to 99? Um, I guess the only way to test to test how I, I don't know, there, there's not a lot of ways other than death to test my theory or my belief. Um, and I guess the only way to go for 99 is to get, you know, a direct confrontation from someone who has some all knowingness and, or just an amazing ability to kind of detach themselves from like the world and and be able to say like no here are some reasons why you're wrong but but i i think that that would be pretty hard to come by <laughs> can you think of a good reason um that they would have to say yeah i can i think oh uh, you know a good reason they'd have, they they would have would be the odds of you being here like on this earth right now of like you having been born and being alive and having two lungs that work and a heart that beats is is you know a miracle in and of itself you don't need you don't need anybody you don't need anything else you have to be completely content with the miracle of you being here to begin with and, and that's all you need and everything else is external that that'd be a, that that i mean i i and that's the thing like i do i kind of fell into that camp and i and I, i'm not and the thing is like yeah, I'm out of there now, and, and I do think my life is the better for it, or it's getting there, but I do think that that is a reason that it, it could hold up, and for some people that would be like that confirmation that they needed to flip it and, and to view my belief as false. Are you convinced that other people don't believe this? Oh, yes, without okay. a doubt, without a so doubt. Not everybody believes this. 
Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, are you aware of anyone? And if you have to go, just let me know. Uh, I just have a couple more questions. Yes, sir. Um, are you aware of anyone that doesn't believe this that has the same amount of joy that you have? I took a religions class in high school, and uh, we studied um, Zen Buddhism. Mm -hmm. And one of the big things there is like the self, and, and a lot of Eastern religion is the, the like the self progression from living in an external material world that naturally has suffering, and using like meditation and thought to better yourself and to like detach from all that to the point where the only way you can truly be the best you can be is by working on yourself and and basically like reinventing yourself through whatever process that like Buddhism or Taoism or um, Hinduism like whatever process that religion requires like that'll get you to become the best version of yourself without needing like any sort of community or any sort of relationships with other people. Um, and that, like, I would say that those people would, would disagree with my belief because they've been brought up under the idea. And that's the thing, like, again, I don't, I could not tell those people that they're wrong. Um, because I completely see the truth in that of like, I have to reinvent who I am before I can be the best version of myself and give that version to the world. Um, so I, I completely, I, I understand that. Um, but I, I would say that those people are, I'm aware that those people would not, they probably wouldn't agree with this. Or, well, mm, I guess that could, could, I guess that could fall into my camp actually now that I think about it. Um, I would, I mean, obviously I need to do some re more research and talk with them about like what are their, what are their direct beliefs, so. Yeah. If you were convinced that they had more joy than you while not believing this, how what would that mean for you? Mm. I'd need to... Hi, Jesslyn. Uh, I'm interviewing Cam. Yeah, about, about something that he thinks is true something that's meaningful to him and I'm just asking him questions about how he got there and what's supporting his confidence and how what could cause him to maybe shift his confidence if at all it's, a, it's interesting yeah and, a good time. and he's not telling me what it is I'm just asking him questions about no the, no no I'm the, not supposed that's to tell part him. of the experiment <laughs> yeah um, we're almost done if you want to do one okay Cool. Well, I, I'm gonna go. <laughs> Maybe think about it, and then come back if you want. Okay, I hope you guys have a great day. Yeah. See you, <laughs> Um. So I think the question was, if you were convinced that somebody who does not believe this had they, more joy than you do, would I switch? What? Wh how, would that affect your confidence yeah. at all? Okay. Yeah. Because um, that's the reason. Yeah. Um. I would say no, because I feel like my belief is not dependent, is not solely dependent upon like a need for joy, because I would say that the way that I used to think, which was much more individual and like selfish to an extent, that gave me a lot of joy and that, you know, gave me a lot of self-assurance, which is like a pretty basic uh, like requirement for human joy is to, to feel like, oh, like I am assured in myself that gives me happiness that allows me to be happy. It's like I, I was, I did fall under that belief and, and therefore, you know, I was joyful then. And a part of me is looking at that and being like, did that really, did, did the opposite of my belief, did that constitute, does that take away from my belief? Yeah. I, I don't think it does just because they're more joyful. I don't think that reduces my confidence in my ability. I just think that that means that, you know, maybe they got to figure it out in a way that I don't yet, or maybe they have it wrong and I've got it right. Or you know, like I said, you know, maybe, maybe I'll die and make it to heaven and, you know, the Buddha will be waiting on me or something like that. <laughs> and uh, he'll say, Hey, you know what? Like 
you were kind of wrong, um, but it's all right. Um, so I don't know. Got so it. it sounds like that reason isn't that reliable either. I guess it's not. I don't know. I guess. Are I you still at a hundred? Yeah, I, I'm still at a hundred. I still believe wholeheartedly within myself that minus the proofs and the the logical thoughts and you know the processes that it took for me to get to this conclusion, even though those might rest on some shaky foundations, I do feel like within me at the end of the, at the end of the day before I go to bed, what I wrote down is still the way I want to live my life, and I gotta and I have to live it by that belief. And 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 like you know and, and if it's wrong, it's wrong and. I think that I think that life will go on, um, but I'd obviously you know I'd prefer it to be right. Um, but I uh, you prefer that your beliefs line up with reality for the sake of me and everybody else. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I would I would hope that I, w I was right. Um, Is it important for the quality of the reasons that you use? to support a hundred percent confidence in, in the belief are reliable? Say it one more time. Do you think it's important that the reasons that you use, the reliability of those reasons match your confidence? No, no. Um, and, and that's, you know, for, for a, a math, teacher who's you know trying to explain why their theorem results in a certain outcome they would say well that's you know idiotic to say that you're allowed to you know rest a theorem on shaky shaky reliability and still be confident in its 100 outcome 100 percent confident yeah yeah uh, so you know i feel like for <laughs> most intellectual and academic fields i would say no but i mean you asked me about a belief and that doesn't take any sort of schooling to get to that conclusion so you're you're okay with being 100% confident in something that you're not necessarily using reasons that support that 100%. Yes, I would say so. Okay. And, I, and I think the thing is, is like, yeah, that sounds, you know, Irish and backwards, but I think that... Did you say it sounds Irish? Oh, wait, yeah. You never heard that saying? No. <laughs> oh, it's, pro it's probably politically incorrect now, but I don't know. I just... Why did why does it sound backwards? Well, because, you know, in an academic setting, you're not supposed to or really just anything intellectual, you're not supposed to say I believe this even though I know it's it's uh like the ground it stands upon to be false or not completely reliable. So it's like if if I believed in it 70% and my my like reliability of it was also 70, that'd match up, but I, you know, I'm believing in 100%, but I already admitted to you that its uh, its foundations are not 100% reliable. But, and, and the thing is, is although that sounds backwards, like, you know, you, you ask me about something that's meaningful to me, something that I hold to be true. Yeah. I don't need to sit here and act like an academic professor. I don't need to sit here like a tenured published author or something like that. I, I can sit here and be an 18 year old kid and maybe stupidly, but maybe not. Like may, maybe I'm right and maybe I don't need all these reasons to come to my conclusion and, and maybe I can really truly sit here and be correct just simply based upon the fact that in my in like my soul I have come to this conclusion and that yeah that's a cop-out and that you know people would say well, you, you're not using enough logical processes to come to that conclusion or where's your inductive reasoning or something like that it's like I mean screw that like at some point with some of these things, if you hold them to be truly meaningful, someone can sit there and debate at you for hours about it and completely, you know, you know, rewire and like devolve every one of your arguments. And it's like at the end of the day, if you still go to bed and you're still sitting there standing by it, even though you know that everything you had to support it is now completely wrong. It's OK, you know, life goes on. And I do think that at some point, in, in everybody's life, you have to, yeah, you got to stand by something, whether you know it to be true or not. And I, I give a lot of credit to people who, um, you know, they believe in like, 
I don't know, a faith or something like that that other people write off very quickly. Like a lot of people say, uh, a, lot, a lot of people have like serious problems with uh, Mormons. Uh, they say that, well, you know, that's kind of like a, an odd way of looking at Christianity. I don't think that they've, they don't, I don't think they really know what they're talking about. Well, who am I to, to sit here and say that they're wrong? If you believe that to be true, if you wake up one morning and you say, I believe the, Mor the Mormon church to truly speak to me and to, for that to be my path to salvation. And someone tells you, because they said that what, Jesus came to America or something like that? Even if you sit there, you give them every bit of archaeological proof that says there is not a shot that he ever could have set foot in the Americas. It, they don't care. And I have, I give them major props for that because that, that takes guts, that takes humanity to sit there and say, this is what I wholeheartedly believe in. I don't care how much you prove my foundations of my beliefs to be wrong. If somebody were to say, you know, my reasons aren't the best, um, but I'm 100% confident that all Mormons should be killed. Would that be a good reason for them to believe that? If they believe that to be an inherent truth, again, I can sit here, I can, give a, I can give a million reasons why that is the silliest idea I've ever heard of and they should never go near anything. But it's their belief, like, and, and they don't need, their reasons don't need to match their confidence. <laughs> um, could, could you see how maybe using that type of reasoning could be harmful? Yeah. Um, but it's one, it's one of those things of my belief doesn't have a negative impact on an entire group of people. It would just have a negative impact on, like, I don't know if I were proven wrong, like, I don't even think that would necessarily have like the worst impact in the world. It'd just be like, yeah, you woke up and you're wrong for that guy who says all Mormons should be killed, like, yeah, his reasoning is the same as, or his logical, like, reasoning is the same as mine. It's flawed for sure. And his, and the outcome that he wants, I think a lot of us could agree is on a, on a moral level, you know, horrible. But, you know, if that's the conclusion he came to, then he might, you know, whatever. He stands by it. I'm not going to get in the way of him. Uh, I just think that... You wouldn't stop, you wouldn't want to stop him? I mean, that's, the, that's the thing, you know, that's, it's a belief. It's just a belief and it's a stupid one. Um, but maybe, you know, I would hate, I would actually, I would hate a world where he's right, but maybe I'm the one who's wrong and he's right or something like that. And, you know, is this the only conclusion you're using this quality of reasons for? No, I feel like everyone has something that they stand by no i mean you're like do you have other conclusions that you're using this quality of reasons to oh, be confident yeah yeah okay. I, i'm sure i'm sure everyone does you are know? there are there any are there any conclusions that do affect other people that you're using the same type of process for mm. well uh i don't really know um I'm not really sure. You're 18 now. Yeah. Have you voted yet? I have not. No, just turned 18. Are any of the conclusions that you arrive to using this process affect the way you vote? Um, or the way you will probably vote? Assuming that you're going to vote. That is, yeah. <laughs> um, I haven't really thought about it yet. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. Okay. We can end it there. Um, I'm so glad you stopped. Um, how do you, how do you feel about how the interview went? Good. Uh, I think having those like thought processes and having, you know, the, the beliefs that you have get broken down and divvied up. Like that's, you know, that's actually kind of goes along with what I wrote. Like, you gotta, you gotta be able to do that. Um, and I, I enjoyed that. Cool. Yes, sir. Um, do you have any questions for me? No, sir. Okay. All do you good. want to reveal what you wrote? You don't have to. Yeah, sure. You can if you want. Uh, I just said, it's really coming down.
said, relationships are undoubtedly what we were put here for. And uh, I, you know, I, I used to, I used to be the belief that you know you could individually get wherever you needed. You never needed to have a relationship with anyone. All you had to do was just be like, "This is me. This is who I am." You don't have to have a relationship with yourself. You, know, you just go through life riding solo the whole time. And uh, I, I used to think that you know all relationships you could have are like external. You know, talking with God or something like that, or talking with you know your friend or or having a knowledge of, of yourself really like. And that, that could all like, whatever, it benefits you, but it, it's not innate. And now I've come to the conclusion, like, no. Our, our ability to connect with, you know, people, animals, whatever you want, whatever sort of relationship you have, you know, whether you want to stare at art all day because you have a deep relationship with that, you go right ahead and do that because I believe that that's, that is why we're here. But, you know, that whole idea of just being the individual self, like I, I believe in people's individual ability to make themselves better and to, develop themselves to a greater extent but I don't think that that is as innate to our beings as us having a relationship with anything in the world around us so relationships are our purpose yes. would that be it without a doubt without a doubt okay cool well thanks again yes sir good to meet you cam good to meet you as well yeah um if you scan that QR code, it'll take you right to my YouTube channel and you'll see a bunch of other conversations like this. Um, and if you have any other questions or anything, just let me know. You can hit me up on the channel and I don't know. Yes, sir. Uh, good luck with school and stuff. Yes, sir. Um, and uh, yeah, enjoy yeah. the day. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> you have a good day. Yeah, you too. Take care.